in Detroit, Michigan, the city many consider the epicenter of the nation's subprime and foreclosure crisis, banks continue to evict residents from their homes at an alarming pace. But over the past year, a growing grassroots movement has blocked evictions and kept families in their homes. Now some of those helped by the movement are taking the reins of its leadership. Uh, this is my home here. I'd like to welcome you to it. You know, come on in and see, see how it is. Detroit resident and retired factory worker Jerry Cullors is proud of the home he shares with his wife and daughter. We've uh, bought this home, like I say, some 23 years ago. And we did a lot of improvements on it here. Colors added an expansion to his home, um, redid the floors, the and put a fresh coat here. of paint on the walls. But after living in and fixing up his home for more than two decades, Colors arose to a jolt the morning of October 31st last year. And we walk up, and the dumpster was sitting right on the side of the house over here, you know, and we were shocked about it because we, we didn't know anything about it. We didn't, we didn't receive anything in the mail. Or, or, or by phone as to what was going on, you know. Under a 2007 Detroit city ordinance, a dumpster must be on site for evictions to proceed. Colors knew he had to act fast, so he reached out to a neighbor who had faced similar difficulties, who put him in touch with Occupy Detroit and a group called the Eviction Defense Committee. Dozens showed up that morning to help block the eviction. Before the bailer came up, while the dumpster was sitting there, we had a bright idea as to the way we were going to stop them from using the dumpster was to fill the dumpster up. And so he said, well, we're going to fill the dumpster up. So we started looking around and said, fill up the, we had bags of leaves out here, all of them down the neighborhoods. So we got all the bags from all around the streets around here, and we filled the dumpster up with bags of leaves. So they couldn't use it. By filling the dumpster with leaves and using their bodies to block the movers, Colors and his supporters succeeded in blocking the eviction. They then held rallies and marches and successfully pressured Bank of America to refinance the mortgage. Colors has now become a leader in the anti-eviction movement and chaired a recent meeting where many facing eviction come to seek community support. Among them was Rashida McDuffie, who shared the story of how her aunt was recently evicted from her home. Received, well, on Friday she received a letter saying that she would be evicted. Um, it was not signed by a judge, it didn't have a date, um, it was just kind of haphazardly sent to her. And on Tuesday, this coldest day, um, she was greeted by a bailiff and several men who proceeded to put all of her things outside. Um, Lawyers and activists at the meeting said because she was a renter, McDuffie's eviction was illegal and the group vowed to support her case. Despite the challenges of keeping up with Detroit's high rate of foreclosures, currently about one in every 500 homes, activists have achieved a number of victories. They have helped family caregiver Jennifer Britt, who had worked for nearly two years to save her home, yet still was served with an eviction notice. Community organizer William Bryce says dozens of residents and neighbors held vigil on her property and used their vehicles to prevent the delivery of a dumpster. You know, we had cars prepared to block the dumpster here uh, at the corner. We had cars prepared to block the dumpster if it came around off Grand River. We had cars down at the other corner uh, prepared to we had cars down at the other corner prepared to block the dumpster, and we had cars all the way along here on both sides of the street. The activists prevented the eviction. Britt eventually secured a new mortgage, and like Jerry Cullors, she's now helping save other people's homes. Bryce says people from labor, religious, civil rights, and peace groups have all participated in the anti-eviction movement. And it's an incredible cross-section of people who have come together uh, in ways that I have not seen uh, in the city uh, before. It's that they see it every day when they come home. That's why they get together. Jim Dwight is a member of the anti-eviction campaign and president of his community board. What can we do? We've got a, we've got a, I can't do one thing alone, but with a group of us, we can do things. And we are doing things, and we are being successful. Uh, we haven't lost the house yet. Dwight says at least 20 homes have been saved from foreclosure in the past year. Housing rights advocates in Detroit aren't just stopping individual foreclosures. They are suing financial institutions for refusing to modify loans. 
One suit filed last July targets the Federal National Mortgage Association, also known as Fannie Mae, and what's called non-judicial foreclosure. Plaintiffs claim that it's unconstitutional to foreclose on homes without a hearing. Attorney Jeffrey Goldberg with the group Moratorium Now filed the lawsuit. In court, we've been raising because the government now controls these loans, they, everyone should have it the right to a hearing before their home is foreclosed upon. In 25 states, including Michigan, we have what's called non-judicial foreclosure. All they have to do is post a notice of foreclosure on your door and then wait four weeks and they, and they sell your home as share of sale. You never get a hearing. You know, and, and when you try to go to court afterwards, they say, well, you've already lost your home. It's too late. While that case makes its way through the judicial system, residents of Detroit, including Jim Dwight, say they'll continue their work to keep people in their homes. We have come together and, and really rolled up our sleeves and said we are, going to get, we are going to go to court. We are going to go to these homes where people are, are, are potentially going to be thrown out of their homes. We are not going to let anyone take away someone's home. We're not going to do it. We're just drawing a line in the sand. And we're willing to go to jail. Activists launched a new campaign this month calling on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to stop all eviction and foreclosure proceedings and negotiate with homeowners on principal reduction. They say Fannie provided relief to Hurricane Sandy victims and Michigan families are victims too, of mass unemployment and mortgage banking fraud. Reporting for The Real News and FSRN, this is Jessel Noor in Detroit.